Hi everyone, and welcome to this quick guide to Google Classroom. We'll start by going over what Google Classroom actually is, and then some of the features of it. So starting with the home screen, to creating a new class, looking at the interface with the stream students and about section, and then finally with how to post announcements, ask questions, and assign things to students, and provide them feedback. Now Google Classroom can be thought of as a way that you can streamline all of the digital learning workflow in your class. So from setting up classes and distributing assignments to them, but also collecting assignments and providing them feedback. It just provides one central location for everything to feed into to help keep everyone organized. So when you log into Google Classroom, you'll have this home screen that has uh, little icons for each of the classes that you're either running or classes that you've joined as a student, whether it's a professional development class or something like that. So if you want to create a new class, you'll click on the plus button up top and then click create class. And you'll give it a name, section if you'd like, and subject. So once your class is created, you'll see that there are three basic sections to Google Classroom. The first one is called the stream, and this is where all of your resources and announcements and assignments that you provide your students will show up in this stream. And as you post new ones, it will uh, rise to the top of the stream. And as students scroll down, they can see prior posts. The second section is the student section, and from the student viewpoint, that would be the classmate section. And a couple quick things to point out here is that to add kids to your class, they can either have the access to the class code, which is over to the left here. And this is something that you could as easily just put it up on the whiteboard and have students join the class with the code. Or you can invite students through your directory or any groups that you have set up. Now, the other thing I'd like to point out is that by default, students can post and comment in the stream. So you may want to turn that off. So to change those settings, as you click here, then you can change it to students can only comment or you can make it so only teachers can post or comment, or at least when you first get students started with this. Then a final section is the About section. Think of this as like your home base for resources. It's a great place to add materials that students may need to access throughout the year. To do that, you would click on the Add Class Materials to the bottom, and then you give it a title, and then you can pull in any attachments, things from your drive, uh, YouTube videos, or outside links. In the About section, you can also invite co-teachers, so if you teach a class with somebody or, or want to invite a teacher to have access to your resources and to the assignments, you would invite them with that button there. Now in your stream, on the bottom right, you'll see a plus button icon, and this is where you're going to add something to that class stream. So we'll start out with an announcement. So an announcement is any information that you'd like to share with your students, and it would get posted to the class stream. Now, you can assign it to multiple classes at once. So, for instance, uh, if there's something that you'd like to post to two or three different sections of the same course, you can do that by checking these boxes here. And this applies for all three types of things you can post, whether it's an announcement, a question, or an assignment. And another feature that was recently released is that you can also, once you get your students loaded in, choose certain groups of students that will see this assignment. So if you want to differentiate and only post something to a certain group of students, you could do that by clicking the drop down where the all students section is. And then if you wanted to add a resource to your post uh, on the announcement, you can add an attachment, something from Drive, YouTube, or an attachment. Last feature here is that you can also tag it with a certain topic, uh, and that will help students filter through their, their feed if they'd like to organize it by topic that you set up. Now, if you click the blue button in post, it will automatically go into the feed, but there's also an option where you can schedule it to post in the future. Uh, and also you can save it as a draft if you don't necessarily want it to go out right now. Okay, the next feature we'll take a look at is how to create an assignment. So once you create an assignment, uh, the difference here is that this is where if you, you'd want students to actually submit some type of resource to you. Uh, so we'll give it a, a sample title here. The same idea where you can assign it to multiple classes if you'd like to. Uh, but a nice feature here is that you can also add in resources from your drive. And if it is the right type of resource, if it's a Google Doc, uh, slides, sheets, or drawings, you can actually make a copy for each student. So on the right side here, if I click make a copy, it basically takes that resource, turns it into a template. So once the students open that, they open an editable copy that is their version. Okay, really helpful for particularly younger students and students that you'd want to cut down in the workflow and make it as simple as possible. So once you're ready, you click on the assign button or like before you can schedule it and save a draft. 
Okay, the last feature is the create a question. And this one is very straightforward where you have two options. There's a short answer question or a multiple choice. Uh, once you put in these choices, then you assign it to the students and you'll actually have a dashboard pop up with the student response. It will have a summary of what the class uh, said for that particular question. And you can also add in resources like say it was a YouTube video uh, or a link to an outside website that you'd like to include with the question. You can send that out to students as well as you post the question. Now when you create an assignment, once you click on it, you're going to go in and see that your class roster will be included on the right side along with any of the work that they've submitted. Uh, it'll also say whether or not they've turned it in and whether it's done or whether it's still in progress. So you can see to the right here, um, the ones that are done, I can filter by this five done button. And then I can actually go in and see uh, the artifacts or the resources that were added. Now students can bring in outside resources or they can create right within Drive and post them there. Now you can add uh, comments right in a document if it's a Google Doc or Slide or one of those types of documents. But to actually give them feedback uh, and give them a grade, on this left side here, you would click on the number if you want to change the numbers. If it didn't want to add up 100, you could change that to any type of scoring scale you'd want. And then to return it, you'd actually have to make sure that you check off this box, click the return button, and then you can also add a comment here. So once you do that, it will return it. Uh, it will give the student their, their score that you gave them and also the private comment that, that you gave. Now, if you wanted to add in all of the grades and provide everybody with their feedback at the same time, you would check this button up at the top and then you could return the assignment to everybody. So that wraps up our quick guide to Google Classroom. There are a lot more features available, which we'll explore in future videos. If you have any questions in the meantime, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, you know how to get in touch.